Since the first Greek elementalists, people have pondered the composition of the universe, but evidence that they sought for a unifying force underlying all nature and everything known by the mind is present in the even earlier pursuits of religion. Despite all of the efforts of religion, however, whether anthropomorphic, naturalistic, objective, all fail to produce data that is anything more than an induced personal experience and comes down to a basic choice on the part of the individual to further go along with the group or not, despite its lack of conclusive findings. On the other hand, science can find no common ether or fixed constant in the whole of the observable universe that they cannot explain away as entropy. As the old Greek saying put it, when Zeus is toppled, chaos rules and whirlwind reigns. The concept of entropy has been described by mathematicians using fractal or exponential pattern generators on computers, in which it is observed that where the patterns approach infinite finitude, growing smaller and smaller, the computer can no longer represent them, and only large empty zones appear. According to chaos theory, such empty spaces are equivalent to random genetic mutations due to replication errors that do not get subsequently corrected, which nuclear biologists increasingly believe to be the trigger of evolutionary leaps. And the mathematicians say that the same fuzzy logic creates weather patterns. Chaos theory, which states that cause and effect may be separated by myriad complex systems. Fuzzy logic, the concept that natural systems have vast variable fudge factors for information translation. And the dead zones in fractals do not begin to describe the reality of entropy, though. They are only studies of data methodology and artificial systems. Entropy is the cause of death and decay for all biological tissue, and therefore interfaces with living patterns and organic forms as well. If entropy could have a personality, it would appear little different than the specter of death. It isn't the word most people would want used to describe their deity, but it fits all the job requirements, being, also, how we measure time. Entropy is described as the gradual breaking down of ordered systems in increasing states of disorder and chaos. It is this force that causes all change in the universe, and against which biological life struggles to survive. According to the theory of entropy, the Big Bang was only the entropy of the first quantum fluctuation and still expands the universe. Think of this as like the first test of the atom bomb, which keeps exploding by causing radioactive particle decay to this day. It is quite right to call entropy the background radiation of the continuum because it unifies the four elemental forces and it is the cause of their functionality. Entropy is even thought to have pre-existed the division between the four forces at a time when all there was in the universe was radiated heat. Thus it is thought that heat is the basic unit of entropy. Therefore, the process of the matter-energy exchange defined as the function of entropy acting upon and working through the four elemental forces is measured according to thermodynamic radiation. The loss of energy, as heat, is considered the constant by which the difference between the moments may be measured in all things. Anything that gives off heat, or is subject to the presence of heat, in its external environment is being restructured by it asymptotically dystrophically. 
This is the liberation of energy from the order of form, and it is a process that will continue as long as there is energy to be liberated from material form. Astrophysicists predict that the universe will age according to one of three ways. If the universe has an open geometry, it will continue to expand indefinitely. If the universe has a flat geometry, it will continue to expand until it reaches a certain constant point of equilibrium between matter and energy. If the universe has a closed geometry, it will expand until it reaches a critical density, and then it will collapse. It has been observed that all intergalactic bodies in the visible universe display a redshift to their gaseous emission spectrums, or the measure of light being emitted by stars. This redshift occurs due to the Doppler effect expanding the wavelengths of light as the galaxies move away from us, lengthening the amount of time it takes the photons to get here for us to observe them. In other words, we know that the universe is expanding now, or rather, was expanding at the time when the furthest, and therefore oldest, galaxies cast the light that we can observe today. Thus, it is the speed of light that has come to be considered the fixed constant, or fudge factor, of entropy, being considered the pivotal factor in the function of matter-energy exchange represented by special relativity. Therefore, if the speed of light is more or less constant, then the most recent observed data indicates that the universe is not only expanding, but expanding at a rate much faster than previously recorded. This seems to imply that a variable must be wrong, unless the universe's rate of expansion is actually speeding up. Theoreticians are debating these days over whether we are moving between matter-energy level shells in a universal quantum bubble, or whether Planck's constant, a truly naturally occurring average electrical velocity, might be questionable. It is more likely that scientists are simply using different values for variables now than they did before, and therefore that the universe is expanding at a constant rate However, that rate is variable within a finite range of differing degree. Based on these findings, let us consider the different possible geometries underlying entropy. If the universe is speeding up as it expands, then it is likely that we are living in an open geometry universe. This is not necessarily as good a deal as it sounds. In an open geometry universe, the fabric of space-time would continue to expand forever outward, carrying all the material bodies within it along the way, and this expansion would not be one-directional, but in all directions at once, thus moving all material bodies further and further away from each other. This would go on forever, and eventually, though long before the universe ever ended expanding, there would be a virtually infinite distance between everything and everything else. First, this would happen to the galaxies. Then it would happen to the stars. Then it would happen to the planets and asteroids. Then it would happen to living cells, their nuclei and DNA. Then it would happen to the spaces between atoms and between quanta. Entropy would never end and the fabric of space-time would be stretched out and bent parabolically, tearing it to shreds. However, if this were the case, then all the galaxies wouldn't just be redshifted relative to us, but to each other as well, as the homogeneous expansion of the universe pulled them apart. Instead, what is observed is that some of the galaxies are moving toward one another, forming filaments, walls, and intergalactic voids in the universe. Another theory is that the geometry of space-time is flat. This may sound amusing as one can look about themselves in all directions 
and know that they are not living in a two-dimensional universe. Add to this the knee-jerk reaction that people used to think the world was flat before Columbus discovered America, and you immediately find yourself in flatland. However, the theory does not address the dimensionality of the universe, but the function of space-time. Einstein discovered that gravity does act as a well around very massive objects, capable of bending and distorting light rays. These wells comprise the curvature of space-time, however, other than this, the fabric of the universe does not display any dimensionality at all, and may easily be considered as a plane. This is not a plane such as a flat two-dimensional field, but a plane of reality, such as the mindset of consciousness that has evolved in a universe governed by entropy, that cannot comprehend a universe where space ever stopped or time ever came to an end. The last theory is the one most widely accepted by astrophysicists today. According to this theory, the geometry of space-time does loop back around on itself in an enormous cycle, and there is sufficient mass in the universe to create a greater gravitational collapse than the expansion of radiation in the form of the fixed rate of photon propagation, and the universe will eventually eat itself through entropic gravity wells such as supermassive black holes. Ironically, the faster the universe expands, the more mass it has pushing outward, and the more mass it has pushing outward, the more gravity it will have pulling inward, and the more likely it will be to contract. Although there is evidence that black holes have been gradually consuming the gases and radiation of the universe for at least as long as there have been galaxies of stars gathered around them, this geometry has spawned another theory of entropy, the Big Crunch. This event would be the Big Bang in reverse, and it is a popular concept among modern physicists due to its similarity to Eastern karma wheels and their cycling cosmologies. While much else in physics is complex to comprehend, thermodynamics is as easy to understand as feeling temperature with the skin. Therefore, it was probably in reaction to this that that first form of sensation evolved in the original life form. Thermodynamics is hot and cold. Hot and cold are simple concepts. Energy moves from cold to hot as it moves from slow to fast and it moves only between these two, and only in this direction. When something is cold, its particles are moving very slowly. As radiation is introduced, the particles begin to move about. Some become free particles, and their energy leaves the system. In this way, all energy breaks down from matter, and in this way, all energy asymptotically approaches the speed of the fastest real particle, the photon moving at the speed of light. The best way to describe this process is by looking at the three forms of water. Water can be frozen solid into ice, and here we see that its molecules are almost entirely stationary, except the surface where they are exposed to radiation and begin to melt and give off steam. In its natural state, that is, at an averaged temperature, water exists in liquid form, and its particles obey fluid mechanics. This is more or less randomized. However, it is always contained within the minimal amount of space, given room for the random reactions. When water is evaporated by exposure to radiation, it becomes gaseous steam and airy mist. In vapor form, the water becomes lighter than air microdroplet macromolecules, and this is fundamentally what clouds are made of. Heat is transported in waves called convection currents. 
similarly to the bending of light by gravity wells, convection currents can be observed as a distortion to the radiation of photons. They can be seen in the distance rising off the surface of a paved road in the sunlight, where they appear as a clear liquid fire that melts the view. They can also be observed in infrared spectroscopy. Emanating from any living source like a pulsating aura that surrounds us with an invisible undulating flame. Convection currents always flow in the same direction, from the hot to the cold, and these are centers or areas where the pressure is different. Heat flows from high pressure centers, cold flows to low pressure centers. In the same way that degree of radiation determines density cohesion, so are centers of high and low pressure, the highs and lows followed by temperature. Isobars are the features of the terrain defined by pressure. Like convection currents, they run along and around pressure centers, but define a dimension perpendicular to the convection currents. Even though hot and cold and high and low pressure are measures of changes induced by energy liberation, such as radiation. Their orientation to one another is itself one of a polarity similar to electromagnetism. The orientation of pressure bars and convection currents relative to one another is more than just caused by electromagnetic radiation creating high and low pressure centers. It is caused directly by electromagnetic field lines surrounding these mobile concentrations of energy. While the high energy, hot, high pressure centers and low energy, cold, low pressure centers move around, for example, in the atmosphere, as the particles between them are moved about by the stirring of radiation, there is increased potential for electromagnetic friction and, for example, in the atmosphere, storms arise. Fluid mechanics govern the propagation of force for the convection currents of temperature over the isobars of pressure as waveforms in two-dimensional plane fields. The variable representing this movement of force in a fluid continuum is given as gamma and it is represented such that gamma is a function of solid reflection interference patterns and potential induction propagation patterns. It operates similarly to a gaseous state, only denser and slower. However, in both we see complex natural patterns arising from simple external disturbances. These natural patterns take the form of both fractals and gnomons. The fractals represent the type of non-living patterns found as the transverse wave fronts of the small waves arcing up onto the shore, or the artificially created smoke ring. The gnomons are living patterns such as the whirlpools of the water or the tornadoes of the air. Entropy in the form of heat, produced by matter-energy exchange, moves through things changing them over time, according to patterns that are both living and dead. The dead sort of patterns are simply higher dimensional forms of harmonic resonance, such as the three-dimensional platonic solids, which are the only five regular solid polyhedra that can exist in three dimensions. Such forms are fourth-dimensional metaforms, like the hypercube and hypersphere. However, when they are viewed as fourth-temporal rather than fourth-spatial-dimensional models, they display a completely different type of pattern of propagation. Modern fractals include the Mandelbrot set, named after its program creator, which resembles a bug or a meditating Buddha and the Julia set, which is an expansion of a Fibonacci spiral that self-replicates on a finer and finer scale until finally disappearing into large 
blank gaps that surpass the computer's display capabilities. These can also be mapped three-dimensionally and excellently replicate the natural terrain patterns of landscapes. By turning the fractals around, or giving them spin, quaternions can be extracted from the dark spaces that look like gummy shells of cotton candy. Entropy also propagates in living patterns, which is lucky for us anthropically. These types of patterns are like pi, which self-replicates in either a self-terminating inward cycle or a self-expanding outward cycle, and under the conditions of polarity, alternates these in a double helix. And, like phi, which is pi seen at an angle and is extractable from the diagonal of a cube, Phi is also present as the involution of tachyons, and these generate gravity, which propagates entropy. Some systems of entropic propagation have yet to be discovered. It is possible that there, hiding in the static, is the hologram of a picture. All that is required to be able to see it is the ability to view it simultaneously from multiple points of view. Such optical illusions are common nowadays and known as stereoscopic art. These apparent fields of white noise or static pixels are actually arranged in a very specific order so that when viewed through two eyes the distance apart of the human eyes, the individual pixels will become blurred together and a holographic projection will leap out into sculptured three-dimensional vision at the viewer. So far, what we know to be true of entropy, that it propagates as gamma energy flow according to highly advanced and relatively simple geometric forms, it is entirely possible to conceive of it functioning according to the geometry of some even higher dimension as well.